Hello and welcome to WMLT News. I'm Chad Brown. And I'm Cody Neff. Senator Joe Manchin made an appearance this past Monday on his Common Sense Solutions Tour. Bailey Gillespie has more on his visit. Concord University welcomed Senator Joe Manchin this past Monday when he came to speak with the faculty and students. On his Common Sense Solutions Tour, he will be speaking with individuals to discuss solutions for achieving a stronger West Virginia. Manchin came to Concord University to speak about the veterans programs and initiatives. Basically, we're hearing from people that have been on the front lines, people that have served in so many different capacities, and I need to know what and how difficult that road to transition has been back to private. You're going to hear some, some good uh, results, you're going to hear some challenging results, and people are still trying to have positive results. But I think that we need to know that from the standpoint of where I am today. The current program at Concord allows for an easier transition from military life back into college. With peer support, community outreach, along with financial help, the veterans are given the opportunity to reach their education goals. This program helps with PTSD, physical needs, as well as providing them a quality education. It's difficult for them to adjust as it is societally, and uh, I think they need a, a second chance program or a waiver of some sort because God knows in the military we waiver everything. We file the proper paperwork and triplicate. But, uh, that was my biggest challenge and trying to work full time because my skill set doesn't work that way. This is my job and it's the best job I've ever had actually. This program is working to assist more veterans in the local area as well as those at other colleges. I'm Bailey Gillespie with WMLT News. Senator Jay Rockefeller hosted a discussion on March 27th about mining at Concord University. Included at the meeting were representatives of the United Mine Workers of America, the coal industry, as well as government regulators, and a window, a window of the Upper Big Branch disaster. You know, coal in West Virginia has a terrific future if uh, some things happen. If people really start looking towards the future and they start thinking about, well, anybody can think about carbon capture and sequestration. It won't do them any good because we don't have any money to pay for it for the federal share of it. But nevertheless, if you want to get 90% of the, the uh, carbon dioxide out of coal, you use, uh, you use that te technology or something akin to it, and AEP has used it, Dow Chemical has used it, and it's worked in both cases. So they're automatically, you solve a problem for centuries, for as long as coal lasts in our state and in our country. You just solve it, it's gone. He called for more focus on incorporating new technology into mine safety efforts. Rockefeller introduced the Robert C. Byrd Mine and Workplace Safety and Health Act for two years without success. U.S. Representative Nick Rahal was the keynote speaker for the 3rd District Accelerator Committee. Thank you very much, President Lois. I appreciate that kind of introduction. To bring together area leaders, state and federal agencies, and small local businesses, business owners, in an effort to help small manufacturing and tourism communities grow and create jobs. Ray Hall said it was important to educate public and private business owners on the help and financial support that are available to them for developmental purposes. He also commented on the partnership between Concord and Marshall Universities, as well as state and federal programs that are designed to help with economic development in Southern West Virginia. Reach out and touch someone because whether it's retraining workers for new careers in manufacturing or developing mobile apps for our flourish, mm -hmm. flourishing tourism industry, the Third District Accelerator offers an array of targeted development strategies specifically suited to our region. Appalachian Power and Wheeling Power will not be seeking a rate increase for West Virginia customers this year. These companies reported this to the Public Service Commission of West Virginia on Monday. This move is the second year in which Appalachian Power has not requested a rate increase. Appalachian Power is seeking a 1.5% rate increase in Virginia. West Virginia Insurance now covers maternity expenses for everyone who is covered by the policyholder. The bill was passed on Tuesday and is required by the Federal Affordable Care Act. Earlier versions of this bill also included contraceptive coverage, but the contraceptive coverage was dropped in the committee. West Virginia's Attorney General is one of 13 Republican Attorney Generals who have signed a letter requesting that all businesses be allowed to opt out of providing contraceptive services in their plans. The West Virginia House of Delegates are poised to vote on a bill that would remove the need to pay tolls when traveling the turnpike in West Virginia. 
The plan is to create other sources of money so that by the year 2020, all tolls will be removed. Mercer County Delegate Marty Gearhart has said that the tolls paid by travelers help to quote, keep the highway maintained in an appropriate fashion to be accepted as part of the interstate system, unquote. When asked how the state would pay for road maintenance, Gearhart also states that the bill, if it is passed, has set aside other ways to pay for toll road maintenance, and that the road would be, quote, fully maintained with no problem, unquote. Another objection to clothing the toll booths would be that the toll booth workers would be without jobs. Gearhart says that they have, quote, got a situation put together where these employees are going to be offered jobs in state government to maintain their employment, unquote. A major vehicle pileup in the Fancy Gap session, section of Interstate 77 on Sunday left three people killed and 25 others injured. Nearly 100 vehicles were involved in the accident, which began around 1.15 in the afternoon when heavy flog, fog <laughs> blanketed the area. Virginia authorities determined that there were 17 different crashes in the accident as a, and the, as a whole. The pileup backed up traffic on the southbound lanes for at least eight miles before the internet interstate was shut down completely to allow rescue vehicles to have access to the scene of the accident. Those who were in the area told reporters that they were astounded. One of them, Daryl Utt, said, quote, It was really foggy at first. We probably saw over 50 tow trucks. We saw about five, five cars come down and three semi-trucks. One of them, it didn't even look like it was a car. It looked like a chunk of metal, end quote. What caused the first collision is still being investigated. There have been no charges placed. Thick fog, which is notorious in the area, has, is attributed as a factor, as well as motorists driving too fast for the conditions. As of Monday, both north and southbound lanes have been reopened. Stay tuned. We have more WMLT news in just a moment. Welcome back. The athletic training program at Concord held a conference recently at Concord. Jared Klein has more on the event. The West Virginia Athletic Trainers Association held its annual sports medicine conference on May 22nd and 23rd at Concord University. The event featured presentations by athletic trainers throughout the state. Kyle Schneider, the clinical education coordinator at Concord, described the importance of the athletic training program at Concord. In the past, a conference has been held in such places as Morgantown and Charleston, and this was the first time it was held in southern West Virginia. Schneider is happy to see it come down to this part of the state. The conference also included student presentations. Brent Rourke, a student at Concord, thinks the event is important as it helps athletes play. Reporting in Athens, I'm Jared Klein, WMLT News. West Virginia may be planning to build a new casino with revenue from its other five casinos. Senator Clark Barnes is in favor of a newer rural casino built in Franklin, West Virginia. Pendleton County, with a population of 721, according to the last census. According to Barnes, this new casino would draw customers from neighboring state Virginia. 
The project is to be placed on the Highlands Golf Course and building costs are estimated at $60 million. President Obama announced an initiative on Tuesday which will better help our understanding of the brain. The $100 million project, called BRAIN, aims to accelerate the development and use of technologies which will allow scientists to get real-time looks at how the brain works. Fifteen experts will be involved in the initiative led by neurobiologist Dr. Corey Bragman. Government officials also hope the campaign will bring economic benefits by creating new jobs and industries. The project is set to begin in 2014. A Charleston man is being called a hero after saving his neighbor from his burning home. Early Tuesday morning, David Kelly heard his neighbor screaming. When he ran out, and when he ran outside, he saw flames engulfing his neighbor's home on Ashwood Road in uh, Charleston. Kelly, sa Kelly says that he quote just immediately ran over and just started knocking out the windows and hollering for him. Unquote. Kelly's neighbor made it out with just a few burns on his forehead. Other neighbors have said that if it were not for Kelly, then the man may not have made it out. Kelly said that he would have done the same thing for any of his neighbors. And now with Ticket or Leave It, here's Nathan Wilcox. This week in movies, we have G.I. Joe Retaliation. Starring Channing Tatum and Bruce Willis, this action flick is a sequel to 2009's G.I. Joe Rise of the Cobra. In the film, the Joes are framed for the crime of stealing nuclear weapons and learn that it was an elaborate revenge plot planned by the terrorist organization, Cobra. G.I. Joe Retaliation is playing this week in theaters. Reimagining what we know as horror, Evil Dead, a remake of the cult 1981 film, features a group involving teens hosting an overnight intervention for their drug-addicted friends. Little did they know what evil they would release into the world that night. Opening this Friday, Evil Dead is not for the faint of heart and the weak of stomach. In a long line of classic movies adding 3D effects for a theatrical re-release, we have Jurassic Park 3D. Starring Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum, a rich entrepreneur decides to play God. He brings in a wide range of experts to judge if the theme park filled with genetically cloned dinosaurs is safe for the general public. As things go wrong, it becomes a struggle for survival to see if humanity is still on top of the food chain. Jurassic Park 3D promises new effects to thrill even the oldest fans this Friday. And that's it for this Take It or Leave It. Now back to the desk. That's all for WMLT News this week. Join us again in two weeks.